Shalom. Call Halim La Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai Bahashem, Rakakwadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule and teach well. And it's sincere Shalom to the 144,000 to one third. Now, this lesson right here is going to be going into iconoclasm. With um, iconoclasm, the Edomites painted over and took on the heritage of the children of Israel, which would be which would be the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, and the speckled bird, the fo Israelite foreigners, whose seed lines go back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now the definition of iconoclasm right here, the action of attacking or assertively rejecting cherished beliefs or cherished facts in institutions or established values and practices. The rejection or destruction of religious images as heretical, the doctrine of iconoclasm. So what Esau did with iconoclasm is when the Israelites, uh, specifically the um, southern kingdom <clears throat> of the children of Israel, were ruling over that part of West Western Asia, and shout out to the elder um, out of GMS Chicago. His name his name just slipped my mind, but the elder out of GMS Chicago, he was going into how Europe is really just <clears throat> a part of Western Asia. So when the Israelites, specifically Judah, Benjamin, Levi, so-called blacks, um, Jamaicans, West Indians, Haitians, so-called African-Americans, Negroes, would make up the southern kingdom today. They ruled Europe for roughly a thousand years. And they knew they were Israelites. And all those buildings, churches, artwork, statues, um, I for, not badges, but I forget what they're called, but those little, with the moors, they have those little, little like patches. Those were all Israelite, um, artifacts so to speak the, they knew they were Israelites of course they were still going off like Jake is still going off to this day but Esau when Esau started coming into power he took over that part of Asia of course things changed it started being called Europe and so on and so forth and they they have this doctrine where the, the 12 tribes of Israel all f fled into Europe and that's so called white people Right, that's the doctrine Esau pretty much promotes. And, you know, they do it indirectly. They say that uh, the southern kingdom, Judah, Benjamin, Levi, are those small hats in our land right now. So let's just go straight into the scriptures. Actually, let's go to here. I got the um, Apocrypha right up in here. Go to um first Maccabees third chapter and verse forty eight and it reads and laid open the book of the law wherein the heathen hath sought to paint the likeness of their images and that's iconoclasm. So the Heavenly Father, the Israelites, right, they knew that Esau was was doing this madness and will do this this madness for starters let's go to another account of this in the book of job and i'm going to actually let me let me do this yeah i'm gonna do this here first and then i'm going to the concordance for something else dealing with job because the, the the color the complexion of job is mentioned in, in, in the book of Job. So this is Job 9 and 24. And it reads, The earth is given to the hand of the wicked. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof, if not where and who is he. So the ultimate judge, I mean, it's just so simple. You can just type this in right here. The ultimate judge will be the most high. So I just typed in God and judge. 
Second Chronicles 20 and 12, our God, which is our power, will thou not judge them? So the Heavenly Father is that ultimate judge, man. Uh, Psalms 50 and 6, and a heaven shall declare his righteousness for the most high is judge himself. So he is the literal judge himself. So so when, when it says Job 9, 24, he covered the faces of the judges. One of those judges is the most high. And of course, you got the angels, you got Yahweh Shai, the Israelites. Those are the judges whose faces were covered. Now, let me get this right here. What I wanted in the concordance. Um, I'm still getting used to this um, blue letter on this tablet. So Job 30 and 30. And it reads, my skin is black upon me and my bones. Salakia. Job 30 and 30. My skin is black upon me and my bones are burned with heat. So let's click on that real quick and go to the concordance for that word black because he said his skin is black. So let's get a deeper understanding. So what he, what he means S to be black of skin, a primitive root, the duskiness of early dawn to be dim or dark. So Job's skin was literally a dark color. His skin was a dark color, man. So what, what would that make Job? Would that make Job a so-called white man? What he because that's because Job was was from the tribe of Judah, all right. So what what does that tell you about who, what the color of the Israelites are? There's another account, of course. This is the most popular one right here. Pretty much all all the old hopeful leg knows about this <clears throat> is Jeremiah fourteen and twelve. I mean fourteen and two. Judah mourneth, and the gates thereof languish; they are black unto the ground, and the cry of Jerusalem is gone up. So let's go into that because that scripture is very uh, poetic like the elder apostle tahar has said because when you go into uh the word black right there it has a double meaning it means to be to be a dark color right like it says here and to mourn and we go into the other times this word quadar is used and this is the perfect one this the first one that pops up is the perfect one uh first kings 18 and 45 and it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind. So so was the heavens morning? <laughs> no, man, the, the heavens were dark. That's why it's uh, very poetic as a, a double a double saying to it, a double meaning, a duality to it. So so the, the, the Judah, which is the head tribe over all of Israel, and of course um the northern the southern kingdom fell under that category of Judah. All right, especially with in the Babylonian captivity, where they're called Jews. So, so the North, the Southern Kingdom are all a dark complected people, just like how the, the Israelites were able to dwell in Egypt, and the Egyptians were were a dark skinned people. Man, they were um, so called Africans today, specifically that country right below Egypt. They got the most pyramids in that country. I forget the name of that country. It always slips my mind. Um, let's go to, and, and another thing about this, this color, let's go to numbers and I'm going to end this off right here and come back later with a part two, because this iconoclasm is much deeper than, uh, changing the appearance It's the doctrine, the heritage, all that, man. And I'm a, I'm a going more into that in the part two. So um, let me go, let's go to numbers. I'm, I'm actually I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit like one more after this, and then I'll come back with a part two. So this is numbers twelve and and nine. And the anger of Yahweh was kindled against him, and he departed, and the cloud departed from off the tabernacle. And behold, Miriam became leprous, white as snow. And Aaron looked upon Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. So the Most High. Did not give Miriam a blessing, man. This is <laughs> this is this is not a blessing to get your your what what, what we know as today as melanin. Uh, what what makes your skin tawny, right? To have a brown complexion and brown and yellow. Again, shout out to the elder. I, again, I, I I forget this this 
the elder's name, man, out of GMS Chicago. He, um, I think he's a Gadite or Rubenite. I think he's a Rubenite. He, he, he was going into how tawny, pretty much yellow is a, a derivative of brown. It falls under the category of tawny. And all nations are, are tawny besides Esau. Esau is the outlier of the world because he, he's the wicked. So where, where was I? I think I read 9 and 10. So this is verse 11. So le actually, let's go into 10 again. Leprosy is not lumps on your body. You look like you got stung by giant wasps or some madness like that. Leprosy is specifically what this is going into in Numbers, the 12th chapter, is that um your pigment, uh, Miriam's pigmentation was taken away. So she was looking like a so-called white person, you see? So, so this is verse 11. Aaron said unto Moses, Alas, my Lord, I beseech thee, lay not the sin upon us. So having a pale complexion, looking like a so-called white person, is sin. Wherein we have done foolishly, wherein we have sinned. Let her not be as one dead, of whom the flesh is half consumed, when he cometh out of, of his mother's womb. So that's how we know what, what Miriam was looking exactly like, because when newborn babies come out of the womb they they look what pale and red they look like edomites um and when it's going into where it says let her not be as one dead is I, I forget how to pronounce it but it's i can just look it up real quick on my phone it's like adop share let's see if i can get that Here it says P Palor Mortis, but it was another, it was another name for it, man. Let's see if I can find it. It was like something, idiot. If you go to, uh, if you go to one of my uh, uh older videos, it, it goes into the the name of it, man. I I can't find it anymore. Here is is called a uh, Palor Mortis. Pelor Mortis, but when I the other one that that I had uh, researched, it, it had another name for it, and again, I, it slips my mind. All right, but nonetheless, it, 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 when your body, uh, when you die and your your body's not properly taken care of, I mean, even if you're just decaying, your 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 flesh, uh, your your pigmentation fades away, and you see your pigmentation fade away, you look like a uh, so-called white people, right? Because Esau was was born like that, red all over like a hairy garment. This is Genesis twenty five and twenty five. So this this is the outcome of you devils saying saying the heavenly Father um, was this looking like a so called white person is straight up blasphemy, man. And as we know, actually, some people don't know about this, but check this out right here. If you type in Adam and God, it's going to show some Edomites. I mean, just, just look at this madness, man. This is iconoclasm right here. I think Leonardo, uh, Leonardo's whatever, Da Vinci, whatever the fuck his name is, or Michelangelo drew this bullshit. Yeah, Michelangelo. Yep. So this this asshole, this fucking Edomite drew this, this bullshit. You got a so-called white man, butt naked, touching another so-called white man. Wearing a pink a pink dress, surrounded by naked, uh, young, young boys, and they're all Edomites. This is this is how Esau gets down, man. This is this is blasphemy because they, they first off they're all uh, have leprosy. Secondly, the Most High is wearing a their depiction of the Most High is a pink dress. Now, of course, they're not going off with Adam being naked because Adam was. And Eve were both naked in 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 the garden. Now let's let's get this right here, and I'm gonna come back with a part two.
this is Daniel 7 and 9, I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. So the heavenly, this is talking about the Heavenly Father. So the Heavenly Father has woolly hair, man. So let's just do that, do this concordance real quick. And if you don't know, the concordance is the having the true understanding of what these words means. It's like a form of etym etymology. So you go into that word wool, and it's just wool, man. Plain wool. And what is wool? Wool is the hair or fur on a sheep. And as we know, with sheep, this is pure wool. So this is not a wool that has been messed with or... or some type of hybrid animal. This is pure wool. And pure wool, the only people on earth who have uh, woolly hair are so-called black people, man. Or, or I should specifically go into the Israelites. You do have Hamites and other uh, other nations that have woolly hair. Because it's written that the Israelites uh, were mistaken by to be Egyptians in Egypt and uh, with uh, the Apostle Paul. So it's not like the Israelites are the only people that have woolly hair, but the Most High has a, a chosen people, and they have woolly hair. Not all skin folk are, are kin folk, right? And with that, I say Shalom.